All right, guys, we are back. This is NFC 28, non-fungible cast 28. It's been a minute. Uh, we were away. I was away on vacation for, you know, almost two weeks and things have been busy, but we are back. It is really, 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 really good to be chatting again. Before we get into everything, I want to say, guys, don't forget to hit that like button, that subscribe button and click that notification bell. Uh, it really helps. We are here to, you know, we want to get some eyes on GOG and uh, all that helps uh, a lot. So let's get those eyes on this, guys. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy the podcast. So uh, first things first, WT, what is up, man? It's been a minute since we've done one of these. I hope life is treating you good what is new what's exciting what's going on man talk to me hi my name is wt nice to meet you buddy <laughs> no i'm kidding we talk all the time it has been a minute i had to come in here and clean off all the cobwebs on my mic and try to spruce it up a bit but uh yeah you were on vacation i'm glad that you got to go away have some fun get some relaxing times going on you had some awesome videos with you climbing a mountain and stuff with your kid it was absolutely awesome to check out on your on your twitch space if you haven't checked out his twitch space go and check it out high energy tons of entertainment i love hanging out there all the time so uh yeah man uh, everything going okay for you Things are good, man. Yeah, like you said, we did a vacation there. I did. A, it started as a bachelor party. Uh, me and the boys, we went out for a bachelor party for four days doing a golf trip and, and out in BC, out in Banff and stuff. It was great. And then the, the family came up and met and uh, and uh, we did another uh, week after that. So it's been, uh, it was nice to get away, refresh, recoup. Like you said, we climbed some mountains and stuff. It was a lot of fun. So it was an amazing, amazing, amazing vacation. Saw some bears and stuff. It was crazy. Anyway, uh, enough about me, man. You know, I don't want to bore you guys with my uh, life. I want to talk about some GOG. That's what we're here to talk about, some GOG guys. A um, lot of things happened since since we've last talked. So uh, there was another demo, and which I think was a massive success. I think it was really, really, really well done. Um, there was uh, a lot of things I liked. There's a lot of things that there was improvements. I liked the pace of the gameplay. I loved how they added all these new heroes. Uh, there were so many new heroes, and I want to talk about that. We're going to talk about our favorite teams and heroes and stuff. Um, there was um, they improved the, the gear system a little bit. Uh, I still feel like they could have improved a little bit more. I still find it a little bit clunky there's more to improve on that but it is better than it was uh and not too many bugs i, I came across uh, one bug but not too many bugs uh what did you think of the the demo talk to me let's hear about it well the, it, just to reiterate it is not complete this is a skeleton mock setup of things to come so we need to keep that in context at Absolutely. all times of everything we say here and they were very transparent about it just like in pre-alpha so more of the same um the user experience was probably the biggest night and day thing for me that I noticed. All the little icons that they had with the heroes to, to tell what synergies you had and the information available on the heroes. And like you said, the pace, the pace was slowed down a bit. And I think that really helped out everything. It was, it was way too fast before they listened to the player's feedback. They slowed it down and it was a very clean experience. The, uh, uh, the pre the pre to starting the game where you go through the tutorial and all that that was done very well i think anybody could figure that out so very nice job on that uh i liked how your ultimates you could set it up so that your team would automatically do it or they wouldn't and that you would have to go manually do it in addition to that they had like this little side circle where you could click on it and when you clicked on it the heroes popped up, so you could go to any one of them, but the one that had it charged up, you could select them, and while you're selecting them, it would slow down the gameplay mm -hmm. to where you're not cheating, but you could set it up to direct it whichever way you want. That's a really nice touch in a, in a high pet, uh, a, a high pace game to where you don't want to waste your ultimate. So I like those changes right off the bat. It was well done. I, I loved those changes. I thought that was really, really, really well done. Um, absolutely. Everything you said there, I definitely echo that. Um, I loved how they sl slowed it down. I loved how you could control your, your character's uh, specials. Um, the game was great. The gameplay was phenomenal. It's so smooth. For an alpha, like right now, and we've said this before and we've talked about the the last demo, this game is way uh, way beyond and, and far ahead of so many things out there. This is, to me, what uh, the gaming play to earn, Web3, whatever, has. this is what it has to be. This is what it is. I think they're on the right track to to dominate this, the, the entire fucking system. And I, I agree with that. I think they're going to dominate it. Um, there was some things I really liked too was the, um, how you, when you, once you beat the game, or not the game, but once you beat the levels, you could go back and do them a second and third time, or is it two or three times? 
Uh, WT, you didn't know you could do that. So you kept farming the same one. Talk to us about that a little bit. I made a lot of mistakes. Uh, <laughs> mistakes were made on my part for like, I think like the first four or five days I was doing it wrong. So like I was hitting number 12 of Frostmere over and over again on the first run through. And I was just like, oh, okay, well, this is pretty easy. And I'm just mashing my buttons and getting my energy spent. And then I find out you can go through it again. And it was a huge mistake on my part because you got a lot more cubelets doing it that way. You got a lot better gear, a lot better experience because you're summoning more. So I was really gimping myself on the summons by not doing that. So yes, I was a noob yeah. during that process with that. There, there was a couple things I got to say that I think were unclear, and I, and I think uh, like like that was one. That was the, it. Wasn't you know they didn't put you automatically put you in the next one or give you the option or give you like a pop-up saying, all right, you unlocked a harder difficulty. I think that would have helped with, you know, that kind of situation. Uh, there was another thing, um, the claiming the dailies. Uh, I made that mistake. I know you made that mistake as well. The first couple of days, whatever it was, we were doing the dailies and they were popping up, but you actually had to click on the X or whatever it was to actually claim them. I think that was a little bit of a fumble. I think that should either automatically have happened or been, you know, maybe like a, a click here to, to claim it or something like that. It wasn't clear. Uh, stuff like that, I think, needs to be a little bit more more clearer on uh, on that stuff because you missed it, I missed it, and we missed it. And I mean, obviously, these aren't real rewards, but... You know, these are things that we got to, you know, figure out now for when the game comes out. Because that's big, you know what I mean? Those rewards and stuff are big, especially when they're dailies. You know, you only get them once every 24 hours. Uh, I think they need to be a little bit more clear on that. Uh, but other than that, I think everything was pretty good. The gear system was a little better than it was. I think it was actually a lot better than it was. I still think there's a little bit more improvement to come. Uh, they need more improvement on that. I think things weren't as clear. Um, but yeah, I think it was all, all in all, I think it was a really, 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 really good experience. Um, the new heroes were awesome. I loved the new heroes. There was a lot of new heroes. Uh, my favorites, I got to say, I think it was Ori and Miria. I don't know how to say that. Mira, Ori, the two healers. That was one thing I noticed. Once you had a healer on your team, um, you could just breeze through it all. It just really, really changed the game completely. Once you had a healer, uh, I felt like you were almost indestructible. So, you know, the fatigue kicked in this time, you know, fatigue worked. So, um, the way I was, I was working my, my best team and then all of a sudden they were fatigued and I couldn't play them anymore. So I had this like, you know, weak team, but as long as I had a healer in the team, I felt like I was okay and I couldn't die. So that was pretty good. I feel like the healers were definitely a game changer in that. Uh, big tanks, uh, new tanks. Uh, who are your favorites? So yeah, for me, I was going to say Ori and uh, Mira. I think that's how you say her name were my two favorites and they were the healers. Uh, and actually there was one more. It was like a, I think she was like a half scorpion or something. I don't know. Uh, she right. was pretty nasty, man. I, that was actually my favorite one as well. <laughs> uh, what about you? Uh, boy, you know, my, my ultimate favorite right now besides Cyrus of course cuz he's he's the the empire and he's kind of my he's kind of my buddy if you guys didn't know but uh I didn't get the chance to play him because I messed up so bad in the beginning with accumulating cubelets for summoning and all that stuff but so I was a little bit behind the eight ball but I was able to secure uh Calix which optically he's one of my favorites it sucks that he's with the glade or oh no wait she is with the glade that's the rumors that I've been seeing is that it's a she which I I couldn't believe it mm -hmm. so Give it its correct, uh, correct pronoun, a she. For Calyx, uh, I also did get Olmac. And those two were fun to play, but I didn't get to play them for very long. But ultimately, the team that I put together that I played the most, and I really was like, all right, I'm going to make this team. I went with two DPS, a brawler, and a tank. And it was, uh, where's my notes here? Gosh, I should have had this off the top of my head. Sorry, guys. Uh, uh, Elaine was a tank. Ahri, ah if, if that's how you pronounce it, Zalathar, and Talvir. And I absolutely was destroying the dungeons. Even in the harder dungeons when I got to them, the tier two and the tier three dungeons, I was ripping through everything. Um, I probably didn't need the take. I probably could have went with another brawler, and I just went straight DPS gear and speed. And I was just mowing things down so fast. It was fun. It was fun because I, even though they are quick dungeons, it was fun just to run through and just destroy things completely. Mm -hmm. So I had a lot of fun doing that. And yeah, that was probably my favorite team that I got to play with. 
Yeah, I think I was running a healer, a mage, and then two DPS or one tank, one DPS. Uh, and yeah, like you said, you kind of just run through everything. I liked it, man. And again, we've talked about it before where uh, we were like, you know, uh, how are these dungeons going to work if they're only like two minutes long? And we didn't understand, you know, you just can't, like, how does that make sense? But then once you play these this game and you see these two-minute dungeons are perfect, and uh, I, I wouldn't want it any other way. I think the two-minute dungeons are, are absolutely perfect. So yeah, you run through them quick, and uh, and it's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. What do you, uh, what do you think? think is there anything that you want to see going forward uh, maybe something different at all like when the next iteration comes out well i would like to obviously see how these guilds work i don't know how this guild things work or like a boss battle or something or, or multiplayer or something but obviously that could be in the in the future but for for now i don't know i think i think the game as a whole is on the right track um obviously more heroes i want to see how the heroes work um but yeah, the guild system, that's probably what I'm most excited about. I want to see how that works. Cause I like that. I like the community stuff, the clan stuff, guild stuff, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that's probably what I'm most excited to see. Uh, what about yourself? What are the things that you want to see added in? Um, well, I gotta be honest here and this isn't a knock. I mean, like, like we said at the beginning, it's a demo, it's not complete. Mm -hmm. And I think they have it diluted somewhat like they did in pre-alpha just to give people the experience. They don't want to frustrate anybody and they just want people to try it. But I definitely want to see this to get harder. Uh, I gotta yes. be honest. It was just pretty much cakewalk and a lot of button mashing. Yeah. I tried up and down to just try and find things. Like I was doing the little slash thing and then doing a quick tap, or maybe I do a slash in, slash out, and then a tap. I was trying to sequence as a tap, like one, two, pause, again. I was trying all these different combinations and I couldn't get anything different to happen. I had one time a crit go off after I did it and I tried to replicate that and I couldn't. So I don't know if I was doing it wrong or maybe they don't have it in place right now. They could have that in place down the road and they're just choosing not to do it now. But I want to see something that gives us something else to do besides just click, 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 click. Because right now, I got to be, I got to be honest. That's what it is. And for now, it's fine. It's engaging because they've increased the monsters. There was a lot of uh, more sub bosses, and optically, it felt more dangerous. And you're surrounded by all these monsters, and it, it was fun. But eventually, that'll wear off, in my opinion. So I, I feel like they are close, but like there's just one or two missing elements of gameplay to where you can do something different. Now, one thing I did do different is I was monitoring my, my ultimates on my characters. So like when one would get close, I would hurry up and switch to it so it wouldn't let it go because I had an auto automatic. And I would try to use my ultimates through all my guys strategically like that. That was kind of fun, but that, that has its limitations too. So going forward, I want difficulty to be harder and just something else to engage me with that gameplay. Yeah, I, I think you're extremely right on that. I feel like it is a very easy game. And like I said, once I had a healer, I felt like the game was just, it was just, autopilot you know you, you know you're not going to die your heels are going to just overheal the damage that's done you could you could all your team could almost be dead you pop a heal they're full and and you're fine and it would come back so fast that you're just you're constantly you can keep your team up um i agree i think it's not but again again this is definitely this is early this is the alpha we only did three right. levels is there what 12 levels i don't even know how how big it is we're only at three and you can do it three times or i, I think there's right. five times so there is harder difficulties that will come but you're right there has to be a point where you know people are going to beat the game they're going to get to the end they're going to beat it on the the fifth time around whatever it is whatever the max difficulty is and then what that's the problem it's like and then what is it just gonna be a repetitive last dungeon you're gonna do one dungeon over and over for the next three years like that's gonna get old so they definitely need some something in there uh different modes like the guild bosses or something raid bosses or pvp or i don't know what the plan is in the future but they absolutely have have to have different modes because you know it does it will get old fast if you're just doing the same dungeon over and over the same thing over and over and you're walking through it um they absolutely have to add something so what did, I think uh, what what did you think of the traps were you able to master the traps because i could not miss i couldn't figure the traps? Them out oh yeah. yeah like the like the like the the steam or whatever and the yeah. axes oh yeah you just gotta time it really did, did your guys <laughs> behind you get hit at all Oh, I don't know. I just focused on me. It was I, like I said, I had a healer. I, I didn't have to worry about anything. Like I literally, I could, I could walk through the traps if I wanted, and I didn't have to worry about it. The damage wasn't crazy to where it was super impactful, but mm -hmm. like I could get my first guy through, but the guys behind me would always get hit, oh. and 
that that was like I didn't know how to figure that out. And I was just wondering if you did. I you forgot, probably you probably can't ask around the community, but mm. I didn't want to get made fun of for like, oh, you suck yeah. at traps. <laughs> I just honestly, man, I just to me, I, like I said, I had the healers, and it was just so I just walked through it, and they would get healed up in two seconds. Like I didn't have to gotcha. worry. I never, I never worried about my health. I never like it was just like you say, just you're you're mashing the buttons, getting through. I never had to worry about my health. It was uh, right. the healers were just wait, and which I'm not going to complain about. I mean, that's that's not a bad thing, but it definitely made it pretty easy um, for sure. So yeah, I think I think for the improvements, I think um, I think you're right. They got to give something more. Uh, it was a little bit easy, but I don't know if that's just because of its alpha. Um, I, I still, I, th I feel like the gear system just still isn't right. It's not there yet. It's there's, it's, it's still clunky. Right. It's just, uh, you know, they're, they're still missing a lot. I feel like there should be a way where, you know, you, whatever gear you have equipped should pop up like in any, in any MMO game you play or any adventure game you play, if it's Diablo or path of X, whatever it is. Any game you play, when you have a piece of gear equipped and you want to equip something else, they both pop up and you can literally see the comparison side by do. side. Like it's yes. it's it's a very basic and easy fix. Both of the, the the items pop up. You can literally see them. Okay, this gives me this. This gives me this. Do I want to swap them? Yes or no. It's it's a very easy thing. Uh, I for sure thought that's what we were going to see this time, but we didn't. Um, the gear system just isn't there for me. It's it's very it's clunky. Better, though. It's better. It's it was, better. You can tell it's you better, but it's when not you there. A little bit better gear because the graphics were a little bit different. I would like yeah. to see maybe a color code system so it stands out a little more. For sure. You know, for sure. you know, green, blue, yep. purple, etc. You know, something yep. like that. But I, I agree with you on that. Yeah, the gear system is still definitely clunky, but it's a very easy fix. I, I'm sure they can get it right uh, for sure. Okay, so that's enough about the. Well, anything else you want to say about the demo? I think we got uh, it pretty man. much. I think, I think we nailed it. Yeah, the demo the demo was good overall. I liked it. Uh, easy, a little bit easy. Gear system still needs work, but again, this is the alpha, um, right. and I'm super, super, super uh, excited to see what this game looks like in the future. I'm still very bullish on it. I think it's going to be amazing, and uh, we'll have to see what happens on the next one. All right, yep. so let's go about the Twitter spaces with Bryson. Is that how you say his name? Bryson. I think um, so, yeah. Yeah, so um, I do know of him. I've actually talked to him a couple times. Uh, very, very, very nice guy. He was big into Axie. Uh, and now he is part of the GOG squad. So who is this guy? And what does it mean for the GOG team, buddy? Let's talk about it. What does it mean for GOG? Uh, I think it's extremely bullish here. Uh, this guy is super talented, super impressive. Uh, he's in his mid-20s or so. Graduated from uh, VCU. He's a software developer, and you can tell he's been through the training with schooling. He's worked for companies doing what he does. And he, him and the people he's associated with that he has developed this team are perfect for this entire industry, honestly. And he has developed tools called Loop Bolt. And I got, I got to be honest, it's it's genius. It's it's a perfect vehicle to incorporate a community to get them doing things and then them getting recognized and or rewarded in a very seamless automated way. And I think that's what we were missing for a long time. We have a very talented, very passionate community that wants to contribute and help market this game and put it on the map, but we didn't have the vehicle to do that in a very efficient manner. And I don't say that in a negative aspect. It just, it is what it is. We were there wanting to do it. We just didn't have that little umph to get us to be more effective. And I think th this young man who, and he, I'm telling you, he's a very wise man. I could totally see why Gary V has brought him into his Gary V in her, in her family. Cause he, he's just, he's the, he's the right guy for this space. He's got a lot of followers. It's very bullish for GOG, and I'm excited to participate in this Loop Bolt program and to get more and more used to it and see how it works out for the community. Yeah, I still have to sign up for it, um, but yeah, you were explaining it to me a little bit, and uh, it definitely sounds uh, pretty impressive and pretty crazy how it's all automatic, and and, and it's uh, it seems wild. So I definitely got to get myself signed up for that, absolutely. Um, yeah, so tell me about how the uh, the integration in, uh, of Loopbolt integration into the GOG community and um, how the integration of the uh, GOG community creator, uh, how it affects the creators and contributors. How does it affect well, it? First of all, it's pretty easy to sign up. It took me less than 10 minutes. You go into the Discord of GOG, you go to the Loopbolt, you put in uh, Loopbolt or exclamation point Loopbolt help profile or something like that, you'll see it in there and it gives you a pop-up screen of all the commands that you can use and you can set up your 
your your wallet, either MetaMask, uh, I believe a Polygon wallet you can set up, and I think a Solana wallet too, if I recall. And yep. you just basically put your public address, just your public address in there, following the simple steps in there, and it automatically locks in your profile. You can even put your Twitter account on there as well. And it's basically uh, an automated process to where they gave out a quest. You go and do the quest. So the first quest they had the other day was go to GOG uh, TikTok, follow them, post a comment about them, a sincere, sincere comment. So they go through and they check and make sure there's no funny business. And then if you did that, you got part of the prize pool, which was a thousand GOG tokens. So I did it. I followed the steps. I got 10.8 GOG tokens automatically transferred wow. right to my public address, which was on to my IMX wallet. It was super easy, super integrated, super seamless. And I know I'm willing to bet that's why the GOG team went with them because it would, let, let's be, let's be real here. The whole process of the GOG team kicking us out rewards, doing all that stuff was probably very, very time consuming, lots of man hours, woman hours, and very manual. This eliminates that for them. And I, I'm sure it's going to allow them to focus on other things. So I, I, I like it a lot. Yeah, that it is. It is very. It's a very, very neat system. From what I've seen about it, um, it is very, very impressive. It's like I said, it's all automated and stuff, and uh, it's going to reward the people that are actually there for the community and therefore the product and the game because it's anybody can be in the Discord, anybody can uh, you know buy assets, but the ones that are helping build the community and being a part of it and building the brand and being a part of their socials and doing these quests, those are the ones that are going to benefit. And I think that's huge. And I really uh, think this is a very genius uh, product and uh, big shout outs to them for bringing that in there. That's absolutely, absolutely incredible. Uh, huge shout outs for that. Uh, amazing. Okay. Now I want to talk about um, – Ryan mentioned something in the Twitter space. I want to talk about this a little bit. Uh, Ryan mentioned the team possibly reevaluating the play and earn stance. What does that mean? Do we have any idea what he means by that? Are we assuming things? Because um, that's uh, what are we what are we thinking here? What is what do we think by that? What does he mean by that? Yeah, he uh, he he just briefly mentioned it, and it caught my ear. I thought it was one of the biggest things. I mean, the the whole Twitter space is packed full of just amazing content, amazing wisdom amazing new things coming and optimism uh, we got to hear step fam go crazy for a second the guy was like on some super caffeinated drink or something it, it was pretty funny i was cracking up laughing at him but the thing that stood out ryan stated uh maybe a step from last year's play and earn theme and maybe earning shouldn't be the focal point and I don't know how to feel about that. I'm very conflicted on it because I take into account all the people that have put into the game and the whole ROI factor and all that. And I know that they have said for a long time that a quality game would be what they would focus on. But for a whole year or so, they're championing the, the play and earn cause. And it was very effective because other communities outside of GOG were adopting it and saying, you know, that's yeah. right. It shouldn't be play to earn like a job. It should be playing and having fun and earning at the same time. And this is a lot of speculation, a lot of assumptions here. I have no idea what that meant. It might not have meant anything. I don't know. But if, if, if that is the case, I would kind of think that the whole extraction model is hard to solve. And I don't think anybody has the right answer for it. It's exactly. hard, no matter what. It's a very hard thing. If you have valuable assets, at some point, people are going to want to extract them. And we have a lot of investors in this space. So yeah. maybe, maybe, and this is just me, maybe they have come to a realization that that problem is eating up so much time and effort and resources that we're not going to focus that on as much because nobody can get it. So let's focus on a quality game. And hopefully that value comes along with it. I don't know if that's the case, but that's how my wheels are turning right now. What's your thoughts on it? Yeah. So I've always said this and you can go back and watch any of our podcasts. I always say the game has to be good first. The, the earn aspect has to be secondary. It can't be the focal point. 
Um, right now, we're so early in the Web3, we're so early in play to earn games, play and earn games, whatever you want to call it, that it attracts the investors. And that's the problem in a lot of these projects. It's all investors that are coming in to make some money and get out. And the problem is the people that are here for the game are going to be the ones suffering. So I like that they're focusing on the game first because if the game is good, the longevity is there. The problem I have with this is this wasn't clear a year ago when people bought the assets. That's my problem on it. So people spent thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, something uh, sold for one of the guild tokens sold for, sold for almost a million or whatever it was, uh, half a million. I don't know what it was, hundred thousand, whatever it was. It was a lot. It was a lot, a lot of money. It was. <laughs> a lot of money. So my big problem is you can't have sales like that going on a year in advance and then change your stance. Be like, you know what? Play to earn. Mm, we got to reevaluate because people are going to lose a lot of money. Now, um, I've what always, do you do, though, I mean, yeah, but you this have is to the, have those early investors to get the thing off the ground. Absolutely. But I think transparency, it's a, it's a conundrum. <laughs> the transparency is, is where you got to be. I think you got to be Ugh. up front on the start. You can't change your model halfway through when all of the, the pre-sales are done. The, the sales are done. The minting is done and the assets are out and it's a year later and the assets are down 80%. It's hard. You, you know, people are down a lot of money and then you can't switch your stance and be like, Oh, you know what guys, we're not going to, you know, so I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I don't know the story. I don't know what's going on, but and I've always saying, said, yeah, I, we're, not we're not saying saying that they are going this way. Exactly. Exactly. I have no idea what's happening, but what I am saying is, um, the game does have to be fun to survive. If it's all about the earn aspect first and the game sucks, the game is dead it, to start. It's done. It's never going to have that longevity. So it is definitely a tough balance to put into and a tough spot to put into, but the game has to be fun. Um, I don't know what this means for the play to earn. I have no idea, uh, but I'm glad to hear that they are focusing on the game. Personally, I am because uh -huh. I want this game to succeed. Yes, I do have assets. Yes, I understand. Um, maybe I won't get the ROI back. That's fine to me because I want to play a fun game. That's what to me what, what it's all about to me. The earning side of it, like I've played, you know, how many people have played Call of Duty for years for free? And they've bought battle passes and they've bought skins and they've put in hundreds of, and they buy the same game every single year. They spent 80 bucks on this game every single year, plus all the skins and battle passes. You put all this money into a game like Call of Duty, you don't earn anything back. So I'm okay with GOG uh, selling the assets and making a good game first and you get to use those assets in the game. I'm okay with that. Um, personally. And yeah, I did put some money into this and yes, I'm okay with the assets I have. And, and as long as the game is good and I'm playing a good game, I have no problem with it at all, but I know that's, I'm not the, I'm, I'm there's other people that will probably think right. differently. And so exactly. I'm just trying to see both sides of it and I'm just trying to explain both sides of it. So I'm going to play the other side as well saying, Hey, you can't really just change the rules halfway through, but for me, it's okay. But I know for other people, it probably won't be. What are your thoughts right. on it? Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's, it's a conundrum. It's a tough, tough thing. And we could just sugarcoat it and act like all the things are rosy, mm -hmm. but we're going to be real. We're going to be honest right. and, and put it out there because it's a, it's a good discussion to have. And I, I don't think they're, I don't think they're thin skinned. I think I think the team understands probably exactly where we're coming from and we'll try to deal with it as constructive constructively as possible. Mm -hmm. And we wanna talk for everybody, just not the not just one side or the other. And that's just that's just how we do it. So you know, that's the way it is. That's how I see it. Yeah. No, I just say yeah, we're exactly. We've got to say it as it is. And, and, uh, and that's the thing we've got to be real about it. Uh, again, it, that comment could have been nothing. It could have meant, maybe it right. was just, you know what I mean? It could have been nothing. And, uh, maybe we're looking too deep into it. I have no idea. So, uh, that could be that, but I, I still, I feel like this game is absolutely on the right track. They have great minds working on this. Uh, they have an amazing team behind it. And I feel like if there's uh -huh. anybody that can find the right answer, it's these guys. I have the most faith in GOG than any project out there, period. And, uh, you know, when they say something, I'm like, you know what? You got to trust the process because you know they have those great minds and they're thinking ahead. And, and we're not going to know everything. You know, uh, we're not going to know everything that's going on. And that's okay. We don't need to know everything that's going on. So, uh, but yeah, it's definitely a tough spot to be in. Um, it's definitely a tough spot to be in for them. I don't know what that means. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe we're looking too much into it. I don't know. Um, all right. Anything else you want to mention about that? No, I think we, we nailed that one. Uh, talk about something that I think is really bullish for IMX and the GOG community, uh, GOG and IMX in a bear market. They're still plowing forward full steam 
unlike a lot of other projects. Other projects are pulling back, laying off people. They're still hiring. GOG has hired even more people. It's it's gotten to be so much now that I can't keep up with it. And it's almost, I hate to say this, it's, it's not negative. It's almost like white noise. Like, oh, they hired more qualified people. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just becoming the norm. You know what I'm saying? So they brought on Brooke Clark, a game analyst, uh, Deborah Kui. I'm sorry if I got the pronunciation wrong. I'm trying my best. Partnership manager, Nick Goundry, associate producer, Romana Witsky. If I butcher that name, I'm so sorry. Associate producer and uh, Cheryl, I think it was Fowler, Fowling, Cheryl Fowling. Gosh, I bet I bet you that one for sure. <laughs> Tess, automation lead. Welcome to the GOG family. I can't wait to see you guys around. It, all kinds of different technical aspects from all different kinds of gaming backgrounds. Super bullish. And I got to give a shout out and a request. Shout out to Sarah Smith, consumer support manager. I've been hearing nothing but good things about her. Sanjiro, our buddy, he had all kinds of issue with his, his uh, tokens and stuff with his wallet. She got it taken care of for him. And he said, thank you very much. He was very impressed. He, he was really upset. He was really upset. And she took care of it fast and very professional. Big shout out to her. And there's a guy named Patrick Wagner. He's with the IMX. He got brought on. He's the director of new games on the studio side for IMX. I want to get to know this guy. I want to be your best friend. You can come on here, hang out with us, whatever. I want to be your best friend because you are going to be looking for the next big game for IMX that is produced by them. So I know I shot a lot at you there. <laughs> what you think, buddy? Well, all I'm going to say to that is welcome to the team, everybody, because you really crushed that all. So I'm just going to say welcome in, everybody. It's, uh, <laughs> and yeah, if any of you guys ever want to come on, I mean, you're always welcome to come on here and, and, and chat. So, um, But yeah, I think, uh, again, uh, it's really good to, to get out here talking about GOG again. The demo was awesome. The new hires are awesome. Uh, I'm, uh, Bryson, what he's bringing in is awesome. Um, you know, I think we're in the right step, uh, for the future to build a, build a good game and build a good product here. So I'm, I'm super excited, man. The community seems, uh, uh, pumped. They loved the demo. Uh, let us know in the comments below all your thoughts. Let us know if you agree with us, you disagree with us, what you liked, who your favorite heroes, heroes are, all that stuff. Let us know below because, you know, we want to know. We want to get to talking with everybody. Uh, we miss a lot of the GOG community. Like I said, I was gone for, uh, for almost a few weeks. Uh, it's been so busy, so we haven't had a chance to do the podcast. So it's really nice to get out here and chat again. There's a lot to talk about. And, uh, yeah, just a big shout-out to the GOG team, man. I know how busy everybody is and, and a lot of love and respect. Um, and, uh, yeah, a lot of love and respect for the team. Uh, WT, anything else you want to say uh, on our closing, on our way out? Hey, I agree with you, man. Lots of positivity. Uh, the, the future's bright for IMX and GOG. And as always, let's go. Let's go. All right, guys, we're out of here. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to let us know below what you think about everything. I love you guys. We're out of here. Peace.